Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So with the Gamescom pretty much wrapped up, we actually got some very, very interesting details that today I want to talk about specifically uh, Phantom Blade Zero. Now we've got an opportunity of seeing brand new raw footage for this game and I am so looking forward to it. Like with the way that they have presented here as well as the combat and the way this kind of main character carries himself, it just looks awesome. You know, it looks like like this sort of a gameplay is inspired by going all in in the animation just to look good of course i can't really say and be certain how it will feel you know when you'll be playing the game for yourself but nevertheless everything that we've noticed and of course everything that uh, people have experienced it and say that they have seen everyone's giving a lot of praise for this game and you know what that's awesome i cannot wait to get my hands on this game and in this case for this video i wanted to get into some of the interesting details and also what is phantom blade zero you know what can we expect when can we expect and what does it introduce? So obviously it's been from the Chinese studio by the name of S Game. That's just the studio's name. Now it's inspiration, at least the main inspiration, is actually by Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance, Sifu, and a little bit of Bloodborne as well. Now, this is important for me to clarify that this is a traditional hack and slash with semi-open world elements. But this is not Souls-like experience. Sure, a lot of people will be quite disappointed to hear this, and honestly, I'm one of those people because I love those like experiences games. But there's still some elements I'm noticing here from this gameplay and the way this carries itself really looks and entices me. Okay, this is a little bit closer to Souls-like experience than perhaps even the developers admit to say. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But still, this is a, well, at least the combat is, they're saying it's similar to a Ninja Gaiden. I honestly never played Ninja Gaiden games. I know there's quite a few of them and also, I don't know, maybe it will be something special, but with my experience, well, I should say with my non-experience of Ninja Gaiden games, I can't really say if it's going to be for me in terms of how it feels, in terms of how the gameplay carries itself. But everything that I've noticed and everything that I can see, oh man, this looks like my type of deal of a gameplay and I just cannot wait to see and play more of it. Well, more of it. <laughs> At least to try it out and play it, right? <laughs> and there's a mention as well that games can be around 30 to 40 hours length. Uh, you know how the developers are like. They say like it's going to be 30 to 40, but in all reality it can be like 15 to 20. That's actually how realistically and on average that people can get through the, these sorts of games. Developers always like to put a little bit of a bigger number and round that out nicely. But nevertheless, again, this is not a bad thing. There's mentions as well there's gonna be tons of different side quests and objectives and activities that you can do within this game so of course it's not gonna be extremely linear going from point a to b and also post game content will be including some of the multiplayer dungeons boss rushes roguelike abysses and quite a little bit of more in information regarding that now of course we don't know much about these sorts of things and details uh, actually another thing horse riding yeah, this game's gonna have that. I'm not sure how that really works in this game at least, but at least it should be interesting. <laughs> I wonder how it'll actually be implemented as well as the combat uh, while you're on a, while you're horse riding in this case. Uh, the development actually been mentioned today has started in early of 2022. And in March 2023, they met with Shuhei Yoshida and Christian uh, Svensson from uh, SIE. So, of course, this means that there's something could be relating towards the exclusivity. But at the moment, no exclusivity on any platforms for now. But you can definitely just see and know, okay, something is definitely going to be happening here. Something is definitely going to be at least some extent exclusive for this game coming on PlayStation specifically. Now, Sony did give them a lot of support and especially on the development and marketing and provided even some of the consoles for the event demos. So, of course, this means there's PlayStation 5 will be some sort of ways involved within this game. And it's not really known to say, you know, how much, but nevertheless, I'm looking forward to see uh, you know, how they're gonna go about the exclusivity. Is this even gonna be coming on Xbox? Because it seems like nothing is ever gonna be coming out on Xbox ever again. Because with the Xbox's decision of going all-in Game Pass, but this also means that 
Well, if you go on Game Pass, you only get one sort of payment. You don't get anything else. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than that. I don't want to get into the Game Pass situation on Xbox. Nevertheless, a full development cost expected to be around and about 55 million USD dollars. I don't know if this considered to be a well, it is considered to be a low on the low end because AAA games are actually even exceeding that to like 200 million dollars. And yet in this case, it's more closer to a AA standard kind of title perhaps. But again, you know, while this development continues on, this margin, this cost can actually increase substantially. Now, there's also a little bit of an extra mention that this were some other inspirations, such as includes the Berserker, uh, Vagabond, uh, Blade of the Immortal, and of course Hong Kong Kung Fu Kung, uh, movies as well. So you can clearly see a lot of inspirations coming from there. And another last thing as well in terms of the release. Um, honestly, we do not know. We do not know if this game is going to be coming out this year, next year, or the following year. Uh, Joe Raptor a few weeks ago actually made a video and he reported and said that this game should be coming out sometime in autumn of 2026. That's extremely long ways away. In fact, it's actually a little bit suspicious because they're showing off a lot of raw gameplay and, con and consistently on top of that. So is it really the case that this game will be even be coming out in 2026? I kind of doubt that. But nevertheless, the thing that kind of intrigues me about all of this, it's just why did they mention it to him? Or at least how does he know this info, right? Anyway, but the thing is as well, I think it's a good thing to release this game in 2026 instead of 2025. We already got so many darn games coming out in 2025. Man, like in a few months, I will be making my most anticipated list of games that I'll be looking forward to for, for the year of 2025. And I get a feeling that this list is going to be my biggest yet. And <laughs> I'm actually worried about that because we still have game, game awards coming up. We still have a few other events coming up. And there are going to be inevitable announcements that the release of the games are going to be coming in 2025 guys push your games to 2026 now we do know a lot of games are going to get delayed even though they mentioned it's going to be coming out in 2025 yeah we do know it's going to be like a lot of games coming out in 2026 instead but my goodness they gotta push these dates or release some of the games earlier like sometime at the end of 2024 nevertheless after watching the gameplay for phantom blade zero it got me very much motivated and excited for this game I am very much looking forward to it, it looks dark, it looks greedy, it looks my sort of a jam. And man, I really hope it actually all turns out well. I really do hope it's actually going to be something special, and perhaps maybe it's a sleeper hit, or like a surprise sleeper, just like was with the Stellar Blade. A lot of people never really thought that Stellar Blade would be able to pull off the numbers that it did. I never had a doubt that it will be something special, and it turned out to be the case. It's the same case with the Black Myth Wukong, and this game actually turned out to be even more successful than we anticipated. Uh, well, obviously because the anticipation and the <laughs> expectations were through pretty much through the roof, but a lot of cases actually lived up to those, well, in those expectations. I am very much looking forward to Phantom Blade Zero. I hope we actually will pull off. And yeah, I think it's a good idea to release this game in 2026. And just like enough with 2025s. We have too many games already on our plate, and I'm kind of worried about that as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I see you guys all, and have a wonderful day.